Hello, my name is Felipe Hevia. I'm from Mia, Mexico. And in this video, it's about how do you design a citizen-led assessment model in your country. What is the objective of this video is to share what decisions go into adapting the citizen-led model to in your context. Uh, Mia in, introduced this citizen-led assessment model in Mexico in 2014. Uh, we studied this model, create tools from Mexico, generate a sampling framework and work it with volunteers. And this video will discuss these issues and should help others and other people and organizations understand what goes into adapting the citizen-led assessment model for their own context. We are working in three key processes that uh, are basic to planning and design how do, how do you work with citizen-led assessment. The first of all is to ask and to decide what do we want to measure. You know, evaluation has a lot of functions, but evaluation has two main functions. One is improve and learning. You know, the idea is evaluation helps to improve and help to learn about our uh, uh, weakness and strength. And evaluation has another function is related with external control. No? In, the, in the Mexican case and the, in the citizen led assessment uh, approach, uh, we believe that improve and learning is the, the main functions that this kind of evaluations helps. The second decision is evaluate which domains uh, needs to improve. No? In our case, we work with reading and math numeracy because uh, we are uh, confident that these two domains are fundamental learnings that we need to uh, accelerate in the time in order to maintain um, successful trajectories in the education. No? The second big question is about why do we want to measure? No? Uh, what are the uses where we'll make of the information generate. No? For example, you, you can create a citizen-led assessment to know the intensity of the problem or to contrast in government information or to propose elements from improvement or involving society, etc. In our case, in the Mexican case, we uh, design a MIA approach thinking to know the, to, to, to share the intensity of the problem and to involve in society in the learning crisis. The uh, very related with this question is who we want to inform. You can uh, think in national governments, in educational authorities, in international organizations, in local authorities or in school. In our, uh, in our experience, uh, local authorities and national governments are uh, key elements to understand and to share our uh, results. First key um, process, the survey instruments. The survey in instruments, uh, we, we develop uh, the reading, uh, but this is our reading uh, some uh, instruments. Uh, you can choose uh, two syllabs and, and then two words and then two uh, statements and then a story and then a, a comprehensional question. And if you see, uh, we uh, choose some decisions or we made some decisions very important for us. First of all, we create a team of teachers and educational psychologists in order to adapt and uh, decide who kind of uh, domains and who uh, kinds of uh, components uh, could be done in this instrument. No, we start, for example, we start in syllabs, not in letters. Why? Because uh, uh, in Spanish is critical the importance of syllabs, of syllabs to learning Spanish. No, it's not the same in other languages, and this is the kind of decisions that you uh, could make. The second is we add an inferential comprehension questions. No, our idea was not just uh, assessment fluency, but also assessment inferential comprehensions. If if the children uh, not just read or the god the, the 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 words uh, even then if the chill children can understand the uh, the things that they read 
The third decision uh, was start from the beginning. No, uh, another um, citizen-led assessment start in the statement, uh, and then uh, would, uh, move forward or, or, or move back uh, according with the with the domain of the children. We are starting in syllabs and then uh, we uh, go to the words and then we go to the statement and then we go to the uh, story. And this is because uh, starting with the statements can be tricky for training. This is, is, uh, we need more uh, time and skills to start an, uh, in, in, in statements and children feel more confident when answering uh, easiest ter items. No? Uh, in numeracy instruments, uh, we add solving a problem using at least two arithmetic operations, not just solving an algorithm, but applying math to real-world situations. This is why the, the idea for add this uh, uh, solving problem. And finally, we uh, uh, this, all these uh, survey instruments have undergone reliability and validity process. Uh, we publish a technical test of the instrument in order to assegurate the quality of these uh, measuring uh, instruments. The second, uh, the second important key element is sampling. No? And what is the right sample? Depending on the use of the information, the sample may, may be uh, or may have with national representation, with regional representation, with administrative representativeness, for example, one school region, or with the school representativeness. Uh, in, in our case, in Mexico case, we choose regional representation because we cannot the capacity to uh, design and uh, uh, to develop a national representation, but we really uh, have the capacity to improve uh, regional representation and move from the state to a state. The, the second uh, point important in this kind of decision is the scale of representativeness. No? The scale of representativeness uh, required is determined by the use. The use is, uh, is critical to understand uh, why uh, the sampling is not in schools or is not in a national survey. Is uh, this kind of, 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 of decisions uh, we can make thinking in the use. And uh, the third uh, important point is the more specific the scale, the larger the sample is needed. No, you need to, uh, in terms of logistics, to um, uh, ask what are the trade-off of uh, uh, choose a huge sample or a small sample. In the case of Mexico, for example, uh, Mexico has uh, 32 states and more than uh, 2,500 counties or municipalities. We decide to select six states in the southern uh, part of the country because this part are the, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're have the, the most inequalities and the most disadvantage uh, in terms of uh, socioeconomic status, and uh, in every state we decide uh, work with electoral district. No? Uh, in, for example, this is the map of Veracruz. In Veracruz, we have 20 districts, and each district we has, uh, we, uh, the, each district has electoral sections. No? And we uh, sampling the electoral sections of every electoral district in every in, 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 in the in the state select no um, why an uh, electoral district because uh, the statics and maps are updated annually is is very uh, good statics and, and maps uh, available for for everybody and because the electoral districts are the uh, equal or trends to be equal quantity of people uh, for example if you uh, thinking in, in municipalities, there are huge municipalities, but there are municipalities with very low population. In the case of the electoral district, in the Mexican case, we um, choose one, uh, one unit uh, that we compare between, between them. No? In your context, you need to understand and to uh, 
to choose which uh, state or which unit of uh, sampling uh, do you need. The third key is recruit and training volunteers. And in, in general, the recruitment of surveyors um, are, are they, they, they need to share general characteristics. For example, one of them is the interest in education, is the respectful and positive attitude, and they need a minimal data collection skills. And then you can choose between volunteer or paid surveyors. For example, if, if you uh, work with volunteer, and in the Mexican case, we choose to work with volunteer, not just uh, but the budget, mainly because uh, the volunteers uh, know the neighbors and the people in the, in the districts and in the sections and uh, willing to donate part of the, their time and knowledge to education. And if you remember, in the Mexican case, we try to involve society to understand the intensity of the learning crisis. And because that, we choose to work with volunteer survey, uh, surveyors. But you, if, if you have uh, resources and budget and, uh, for example, lack of time, maybe paid survivor uh, could be a good idea. Uh, in, Mexico, in the Mexican case, each district will need 30 volunteers. We are looking for key partners in each district. For example, in Veracruz, we have 20 districts. we looking for key partners in each of every uh, 20 districts. For example, we choose or we try to, 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 to tie with college and universities, teaching training centers, civil society organizations, and so on. The idea uh, um, from Mia was uh, to create a squad of training uh, who move uh, from district to district in order to uh, train the volunteers. And this uh, decision was a logistic decision. No? We, we, we choose this uh, way because uh, for us, was cheaper and quicker uh, to move the one squad of, of, of training uh, and not to use the cascade uh, process. In the surveyor training, uh, there are three critical or key processes. One of them, or decisions, one of them is you need to choose what is the type of training. You can choose face-to-face -face or hybrid, zoom part on light parts, and um, you can choose training to master training and then the training to training in select district, or you can choose, for example, for this was our choose, to, uh, to create a squad of training. No? The, second, the second decision is uh, understand the training contents. No? Uh, what, what is the content of these trainings is related with communication with local authorities, household selections, application of learning tools, application of context questionnaires, and fill out the forms. And finally, it's necessary to understand and to include training quality assurance processes. That include uh, content evaluation and training satisfaction, uh, sat sat uh, satisfaction surveys. In the, in the Mexican case, we developed the stage of training writing. We train a team of master training who travel to the district to ensure the quality of the training and evaluate satisfaction and knowledge of the training. That's all. This is uh, finished. In, in this part, finish our, our uh, video. I hope this video uh, could uh, be helped in order to uh, understand which decisions are made and, uh, and uh, if, if you know our uh, decisions in the MIA case, you can um, be useful to you. Thank you very much and have a good day.